to Mount Port Nollis on the way back to Springbok and then turn right towards Clansia. And this is the road, it's a dirt road which uh, you travel on for about an hour until you reach the beautiful secluded little village of Clansia. So you know we're just chatting about um, how you can actually leave the city and all your creature comforts and just escape to some place that's really really beautiful in our country without having to spend tens of thousands buying plane tickets and you really are in some of the most beautiful places in the world. This west coast is really absolutely exceptional and you know she's got a different perspective because she doesn't kite and surf and um, so her holidays are a little bit different to always watching the wind and seeing what's happening out there in the sea and maybe she can give you a bit of perspective of you know, her, you know, her taking it and what she thinks about traveling around like this. So see, um, you know, we stayed in Port Nullis over the last couple of days. Did you enjoy staying in it there? You know, what, what did you think of the town? Welcome to Clansia. We've arrived at the beach cottage accommodation in Clansia. And it really is beautiful here. Stark, wonderful coast just in front of us over there. We can see the waves and it looks like a big open beach that we can go kite at. So we'll get ready and unpack. But first I just want to take you through and show you what the accommodation looks like. Here are the girls just sorting out what's happening inside the accommodation the lounge area and we've got the bit of bra which is fantastic this is the first bedroom over here this is the second bedroom very cozy there's a place at the back that we can actually lock up the trailer which is great well, I don't think anything needs to be locked up here it really is it just feels like a really safe spot And this is the kitchen, very well stocked. All the amenities that we need. And everything that we need just to have a couple of beautiful days at Clansia. We're at Clansia and we're going to be making some fresh sourdough bread. 
side, what we need is 650 rolls of water. We need a tablespoon of salt. We need 456 grams of brown flour. 40 grams of white flour. We chuck it all into a pot. Over here we mix it up and we let it stand for a while. Two hours is pretty good. We should actually let it stand overnight. But we don't have time because we need fresh bread for tonight. And then once that's all done and the people started working together, we put a bit of sourdough starter. Wow. And this is Steve. This is our sourdough starter that we've been cutting around for the last year. And he's worked pretty hard, giving us some good luck. So we're going to mix it all up and uh, the proof will be in the pudding later on this evening with our supper. Going down to the cut spot, and this is the gate. It's a closed road, no trespass, private property. This is the main cutting spot at Plenty. Looking across there now, there's 8 to 10 foot swell coming through, really solid in the back, very, very mixed up on the inside. It um, doesn't look ideal today. It's almost like a washing machine in the middle. There's some rocks too. Eh? Let's see we can go. And we drove past the bay a little bit further back, about two, three k's back. I'm going to head back there and go and have a look and see if we can pump up and go tight there. Tunes. <laughs> Play some tunes, Jesse. That's so beautiful. <laughs> I was in the zone. Well, we just come off the sea. It's hectic. It's uh, 35 plus on the gusts, and um, really amazing little spot. This at Clansia. a nice bay with a wave coming off through the kelp, but every now and then a, a decent wave. Be lovely with a, I think with not as much wind. What do you guys think? You have a good cut? It was wild, but it was good. Pretty wild. And here we've got some cut tunes played by Jess. Jake puts his big knee down, you'll be able to see the ukulele. <laughs> Yay! There we are. So here we are <laughs> West Coast. We had lots of afternoon cutting, and what better thing after cutting than fresh West Coast oysters? And um, we're gonna have some oysters. Show. Pop this hint to your forehead, and then you slide your knife inside here and you shimmy it along to loosen the abductor muscle that sits right here. And the top should just pop up like that. There you have a beautiful West wow. Coast oyster. Next level. Over here with Q, the oyster meister of Plansia. And he's showing us a couple of tricks about how to open an oyster. So this is the easy. 
zero. So we're making our sourdough bread, but uh, just like they would have been the days of old when it first came out of this coast, we're going to make it in a poiki pot. Here we've got our loaf going in, and we're going to put it into the oven. And then as they say, 260 degrees for 20 minutes, take the lid off, and then 200 for the other 30 minutes. So how do we do that? We close it up. For 200, we open one of the flaps. Sounds good. Voila! So we left Port Nollet and decided to go and spend a couple of days down the coast at Clansia, which is um, a pretty much uh, a bit of a ghost town. I mean, lots of empty houses and but beautiful, just lovely stock. What a wild, wild coast. And they've got oyster farms. It really just touches on the edge of the diamond area. So there's a lot of restricted areas that you can't actually get into, but fortunately we met a local guy, Q, who's, uh, he knows the area intimately. And he gave us a couple of warnings um, about the places to kite. Um, right in front of our little cottage um, down on the beach is an open beach where you can kite but very very strong rips you've got to be careful of that and we went down to go and have a look and the wind was gusting uh, 30 plus and when we finally got in the water it was 35 plus knots gusting and um, that particular beach just looked completely uncontrollable there's a huge wash on the inside very very strong rip and massive sets out back and we decided not to kite there so we drove a little bit south and we found a secluded bay where the big swell actually hits a kelp bed about two, three hundred meters out to sea and it just flattens it um, quite a lot and takes some of the power out and leaves a little wave, like a two, three foot wave and um, that was a lot of fun. So we ended up kiting there. It was very really gusty but um, we had a great afternoon and really glad to have gotten the water. So that's definitely a spot to put on your list when you come out the spot. But I'll leave it to the rest of the guys to tell you their experience and um, what they found. Yeah, so it looked a bit daunting at first. Um, some rocks on the left and right hand side and the kelp out back. So um, I was a bit uh, apprehensive to take a surfboard with my fins. Um, but uh, we took a twin tip out, I took a twin tip out and it was really, really nice. Nice flat sections uh, in between the waves. Very, very nice clean little waves rolling through. Um, uh, Mitch was on his surfboard and he made it look really, really like a lot of fun. So next time, definitely give it a go on my surfboard. Oh, cool. And you, Jack? It was really good, eh? Um, lots and lots of kelp, so you'd have to ride away behind the kelp just to get back in. And very good for boosting, except the wind is extremely gusty, so it's not the best to go super high. But, um, Maybe more for a directional, because out of the back there's a really good left that runs off a rock or a reef somewhere out there. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty good, eh? And Jake, tell us about your launch. Uh, yo, so I ended up launching. Uh, as I launched my kite, I went flying down the car to the beach. And yeah, got some black grazes. <laughs> a bit of a gravel rest in a new Manera seat. The seat to the test and that passed. Yeah, the seat, the seat actually passed the test. Unfortunately, you weren't hurt, which is the main thing. What did you think of the spot overall, Jess? Uh, yeah, it looked uh, super fun. Um, little waves coming in. Um, I was photographing the whole thing, so I didn't get to see it. Yeah, really cool. Yeah, great. So, I think. Um, it's quite a versatile spot, so if it really is gnarly on the main beach break, you can head a little bit further south and go and um, kite there, which was great, it was nice and protected. And we're going to be going a little bit further south today to a place called Honeymoon Bay and then about 15 k's down the beach to Brazil. And um, they're both 
um, sound amazing places. You need to get keys um, to get through the gates to get into restricted areas. But um, we've got some good local guys that have um, told us what to do and how to get there. And um, we're going to have a great time. So, yeah, I hope we can give you some good feedback on those spots. But it's been fun and been a good trip so far. Time for waffles. Time for waffles. Yeah. We've taken a drive into the conservation area south of Clansia. And we are literally the only people here today. And the reason I know that is because when I went to go and sign in at the museum to get a key for the gate into this, this uh, restricted area, there's actually nobody else that signed in today. And here we are on this beautiful coast that Sculpey's by. of the ocean. 